Hey family, welcome to another episode of Soulful Conversations with Frank and Sheila Battle. And we are back. <laughs> we. 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 are back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> Hope sir. everybody's doing well. Yes. Um, thank you all for uh, for either you know plugging us in on your um, your favorite podcast app or tuning in, watching on YouTube. Either way, we love ya. We appreciate you. We appreciate each and every and one of you. And we appreciate all the interesting commentary we yeah. got from the last podcast. You know, oh we try not to be God. sensational, but this episode about sex, y'all something else. Yeah. Y'all something else. We have gotten some funny phone calls, and it's been good. We're we'll grateful. share that one day. <laughs> We're grateful. We're grateful. We're we grateful. appreciate it, though. Yes. All right. So um, today's um, podcast, we're going to talk about um, five things couples should talk about before marriage, and I kind of put parenthetically, mm, uh, right. long-term relationship. Yes. So there's, again, there's five things that couples should talk about um, before marriage or long-term relationship. And this is a carryover from the couples event we did uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And so we'll jump right into it because we value your time. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll jump right into it. Number one. Number one is sex, and it's not a continuation <laughs> from the last video. <laughs> yes. So the difference in this conversation that needs to happen, um, it's relative to timing and frequency. So before, you know, we were having a conversation about, you know, Initiation. if you're already married, you know, how do you get your partner to initiate more yeah. if you feel like that's an issue or a challenge in your relationship? For this one, it has more to do with frequency and timing. And what we, I think we, you all know what we mean by frequency. You know, do you do you want to engage two or three times a week, or does your partner want to engage every day? Every like day. Y'all got to work that out. He just said every day. Some people want it every day. Yeah. Some people want it all. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> That was hilarious. Okay. I got to get myself together. So I thought he was saying every day personally, but okay. Um, when we talk about timing, timing what yeah. we're actually talking about is time of day. And so our example with that is that um, there could be one person in the relationship who is a morning person. Yeah. They wake up. Long, strong, wake and up, ready. Wake up, wake up, wake up. They are get like, up, get up. I'm awake, I'm alive. <laughs> this is how I get my day started. But they could be partnered with someone who is a night person yeah. or an evening person. Kind of a chill. And this is the person who who is thinking, it's been a long day. Yeah, I want to take a hot bath. This is the way I want to relax. Yeah. This will put me to sleep. This will ensure that I sleep all night. Candles. We get to cuddle yeah. afterwards. And, and I mean, we're not even talking about rose petals and candles and all of that stuff. It's just the it's just the physicality of it. Like no, this will this is better than melatonin. But that stuff for those of you who are taking melatonin gum, gummies. Um gummies. not that that's a bad thing. Gummies. Um, but <laughs> not those gummies, the oh, melatonin oh, okay, gummies. Okay. Right. So those who feel like, you know, sex is better at night, you know, I get to I get to Unwind. I get to relax. This is a wonderful sedative. Uh, it will ensure that I sleep all night. Um, the kids are down. I don't have to worry about if the phone is going to ring. All of that thing. We don't have to rush. We can take our time. So you, as partners, you mm. want to have that conversation. Right. Okay. You just want to have that conversation. If you know that you're a morning person and your partner is an evening person, then have that conversation. Because what we found is that sometimes this resistance to initiation has more to do with things that are within your control yeah. as opposed to things that are outside of your control. So this whole thing around frequency and timing is within your control. It is. And sometimes you can get tied up into thinking that the lack of initiation is about rejection mm -hmm. when really it's about lack of a conversation. Right. So just have the conversation. If you're a morning person and they're an evening person, talk about that. Work that out. Come up with a compromise so that you have a sexually satisfying relationship. And that does not rule out 
spontaneity. It does not. So it does not. That's the cherry because on everybody top. Everybody knows the little passionate, spontaneous, let's just get it on. Mm-hmm. It ain't bad. We're working from home and it's lunchtime. Okay. Mm. Okay. Turn off all the zooms. Google Meet X out of it. If you if you know that you <laughs> if you know that you work from home with somebody like that, just make sure all the devices are off. The, mm. the lid on the laptop is closed and all of that. Shut stuff. it down. Shut her off. Shut Close it all it down. Up. And make sure that you're good before you engage. Okay, because yeah. we don't want to see you or here. All right, so number, number two. Number two. <laughs> Can we please move on? Number two. Number two is children. Yes, and so that's a broad conversation. Yeah. To 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 have children or to not have children. If you have children, how many? If you have if you have multiple children, how far apart? All of those things are things that you want to make sure that you have a soulful conversation with your partner yeah. about before marriage. Yeah. Um. We find that even in same-sex marriages or same-sex relationships, this issue around children is still critical. Yeah. Some people want them, some people don't. You got to figure that out. If you can't figure it out, is the is the is the compromise to get a dog, you yeah. know, like or or a pet or something, right? Um, you just want to make sure that you're creating a space of safety and you're creating a space of compassion when you have these conversations because yeah. you don't know, you know. Um, some people have had this i this ideal about what a family is from childhood. Right. So you want to make sure that you're having a conversation that it's not just a selfish conversation about what one person wants over the other, but that it is a compassionate, connected conversation mm-hmm. about how you want to grow your relationship and how you want to see that relationship prosper together. That's and, what it's about. And another piece of this, this really kind of was, we were watching Harlem. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. So if you haven't watched it, stop here. Stop here. And come yeah. back. Promise us you'll come back. Yeah, come on back. You promise? Go watch it and then okay. come back. Yes, All right. So we were watching and it's um, Camille and Ian, the two characters, and they end up breaking up because of this very thing. Yeah. Um, there was not a, um, what I would call a quality conversation. Right about children you know they may have it may have been in passing but there was not that real conversation about what i really want and what my expectations are and it caused the relationship to break up so you don't want to be in a situation where you get far down the road long term or marriage and um you realize you don't realize you don't want the same thing Mm -hmm. And so we want to be sensitive to that and, and in, in the conversation being sensitive too, because there are people who may have had, you know, issues. Yeah, physical so, issues. Physical issues. And that came up in the show. Yeah. So in the show, Ty, her friend, and Camille, they're their best friends in the show, um, they're they went to the doctor. Mm-hmm. And realize that one of them mm-hmm. is more likely to get pregnant than the other. Exactly. And Ty who is a lesbian or bisexual in the show, decided she wanted to freeze her eggs. So this is that conversation, right? So if you're in these, in all of these different types of relationships, you just want to make sure that you're having the conversation. Yeah. The conversation is way more important than standing off in your corners with ideals and fantasies about what you think your partner wants. Right. Just go ahead and have the conversation. Have the it's conversation. really important. Because you because there was a scene in there again where, you know, Ian is excited about them and moving yes. into their new place and he's talking about kids and playing reading books. Reading and books doing and all the things. Camille is just kinda like, like <laughs> So you you know family, you don't you don't want that. We don't want anybody, you know, to to be in that situation. So that's the second one, children. Yes. And so, so number three, number three is spirituality, spirituality. And the reason we use the term spirituality instead of religion is because religion or religiousness are terms that can be off putting. Right. right? So we want to use this broad term of spirituality because people have different faith confessions. Yes. And some people have no faith confession at all. Right. And the idea here is that you have a soulful conversation about how you want to show up spiritually in your relationship, Mm -hmm. how you want to live your lives together Mm -hmm. and individually Mm -hmm. from the perspective of divinity. Right. And so you want to really talk about 
you know, if, 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 if this per if one of the partners is a, you know, Bible carrying scripture, quoting church going, um, partner, is that going to be an issue problem or challenge later on for your partner? Right. Um, especially if that partner does not assimilate. Yeah. Does not come on and start going to all of the things with you. Right. You just want to make sure that you have the conversation. Um, when we were in marital counseling, Bishop Glenn said to us, if nothing changes, do you think you would stay together? Right. So right. we know that a lot of times people get into relationships with the hope of mm-hmm. transformation. But what if nothing changes? Yeah. If If you are partnered with someone who loves to sleep. And feels like Sunday is their day of rest. Five years later, are you going to be mad because they don't go to church with you? Because they're still doing that. Because they're still doing that. Are you going to be mad because they don't go to the temple with you? Or they don't go to the mosque with you? Um, Is that going to be an issue? And is that something that you all can talk about, even from a future tense Mm -hmm. right now? Um, Then for the people who are both spiritual... Do you do you engage in spiritual practices the same way? Mm-hmm. And so, like Frank and I do not. Like we go to church, you know, we love worship music, all of that stuff. I, we both love old school worship music, all of this stuff that's happening now. I we love God. Say. You don't love God. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Like I don't understand none of that, right? So <laughs> I don't understand all that when you're doing all of them runs and your voice doing all of those, you know, verbal acrobatics. I don't know. Just, I'm not saying it's not a gift and it's not a talent. I just don't. Just, I just don't get that's it. Just right? Not your, what are you singing about? Who that's you not your jam. To? What are you singing about and who are you singing to? And if I can't figure that out and what you're saying, then I don't want to listen to yeah. it. Mm. So anyway, so Frank and I are different. We, we have things that we are very much on the, on one accord about, but then we have things we're different about. Case in point, Frank is a person who's going to dive into his word every day. He has a Bible that's this thick. <laughs> Can y'all see that? It's this thick. And Hater. He going he to crack that joker. Mm, not that joker. He going to crack the good book. He going to crack the good book open it's every day. It's broken. It's broken good. It's probably the seams. It's probably... on. And 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 that was me earlier in our relationship. I was a student, studious, very studious about the word of uh-huh. God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I transitioned. And what I've transitioned to is this place of prayer. But you still read the word. I do. I do. And I use an app. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I use an app so because I want to see all the translations and I want to see all the commentary on it. And I want to have that. I'm still a student. I right? do too, family. But he just does it different. And so... We don't have a challenge in that area. We just don't do it the same. And when I see him in his word, I leave him alone. And when he sees that I'm in a place of prayer, he leaves me alone. Mm -hmm. Um, But this is that conversation about spirituality. Mm -hmm. I don't beat up on him because he doesn't do it the way I do it. And vice versa. We both have our ways of connecting. We both have our ways of diving into into the divine. And we don't cancel each other or fuss with each other because those ways aren't aren't the same yeah and so we encourage you if you are a young buddy have those conversations have those conversations don't assume and don't think that you can take advantage of or pray somebody into against their will yeah because that's not what this is supposed to be about right we're supposed to be on the journey together Mm -hmm. and having a soulful conversation as we go Exactly. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. All right. That's how Sharonda so says. Stop hallelujah. it. They don't know Sharonda. Yeah. They okay, don't know sorry. Sharonda. All right. So our next one <laughs> is the uh, vocational goals. And this is important because um, you can have one partner who is, I want to get a job. I want to make a certain amount of money. I want to retire from that place. Or even if I move around. My thing is I want to work. I want the confidence and the security of knowing on the first and the fifteenth I'm gonna get paid. Mm-hmm. I don't I'm not a risk taker. You know, I want to do work that I enjoy, mm-hmm. but I I I my preference is the comfort of knowing the check is coming. Yeah. And then you can have a partner who's an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't know when the money coming. <laughs> And the money can be sporadic and it can be inconsistent and they can be absolutely comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are you having a soulful conversation about who is who? Are you the rock solid, going to work every day, 
going to put in your 30 years, get a watch and a certificate? Or are you the type of person who's like, yeah, I don't mind having a job, but I want to learn different things. So every five years, I'm going to be looking, I'm going to change jobs. I'm going to want to do something different. I'm, I'm going to want to explore my talents and abilities. Mm-hmm. Or are you the person that's like, I can't work for somebody else. Yeah. And I need to be an entrepreneur. Right. I have gifts and talents. I have artistry. I'm a creative. I want to get out here and I want to better on me. That's I'm going to start a business. Have that conversation. Because it, five years in when you have a mortgage and kids isn't the time to start having a conversation. And it's not that you can't. But if you can get have that conversation early, if you mm-hmm. can create this space and make sure it's safe enough for people to share their dreams with you, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this job. But just so you know, I'm the bomb.com and I really could branch off and do something different. Yeah. You just want to make sure that that's one of the conversations that you guys are having. Okay. It's very so important conversation. Vocational goals. Yes. And our last one is money, 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 money. Some people money. got to have it. Money, this money, is on the top of the list of issues in marriages and relationships. I think the statistic is 56% of yeah. couples who divorce or separate of do so because of money. I want to say that the statistic is still 56%, but it's 2023. So that number may have changed post COVID, but we want to make sure that you're having conversations about money. Yeah. Here's the thing. Who's going to manage the money? Mm-hmm. Are you going to have joint accounts, separate accounts? Are you going to have a household fund and separate checking and savings like accounts? Little play money. Um, we have an incredible resource in the person of Salathia Johnson, who is a money mindset coach. And she has soulful conversations with couples all the time about their core beliefs about money, how you think, save, and spend the way that you do. If so, if you don't feel like you can have a productive, progressive, solution-focused conversation about money, we strongly recommend Salathia. But this conversation about money is critical. If you are a partner who's a spender and you done hooked up with a saver, there's going to be a problem. Unless you talk about it. Unless you talk about it. You got to talk about it. got to talk about it. So we just want to put that out there because you don't want people you know, hiding money. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in relationships where people are hiding money. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in relationships where one person's credit score is 812 and the other person's credit score is, you know, 210. I don't even know if your credit score can be 210. You can't buy candy with that. You can't buy candy. (laughs) You can't go to Sam Lim. Anyway, um, you want to just make sure that you're on the same Yeah. And you mentioned that. That is, I think, also when you're talking about someone you're meeting and you're (laughs) thinking they're serious, you're thinking of it, this is a serious relationship, like seriously dating, you should talk about that credit score thing. Yeah. I mean, because it's important because later when you start doing things together, it will be a factor. Vehicles, homes, um, when you start this back up to number two children. If you start talking about children, you got to talk about daycare. Yeah. You got to talk about mm-hmm. medical expenses in case that child has special needs. Just all of the things, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying walk up and say, what's your credit score? No. I'm not saying that. <laughs> it's after you get to know someone for That's a not while. sexy. And you figure this, this is someone you're seriously dating. That's not sexy. Those conversations at that time. Don't do that. Okay, So um, we want you to... Be comfortable. Yeah. And if you're not comfortable, ask for help. Yeah. And that's with all five of these. So um, the title of this episode is Five Things Couples Should Talk About Before They Get Married or Commit to a Serious Long-Term Relationship. And just to run back through them really quickly, those five things are not in order of importance, but just in order um, of the way that we discussed them is sex. Mm -hmm. And sex is about the the sex conversation. This particular sex conversation is about frequency and timing, children Children. to have or to have not, spirituality, Spirituality. faith confessions, um, and and spiritual disciplines, Mm -hmm. right? We want to talk about vocational goals. Are you a career partner versus an entrepreneur and we want to talk about money Money. are you a spender a saver an investor or other um and so yeah these are five things and again this is a piggyback off of 
the event that we did um, last weekend where we met couples in various stages. Yeah. And specifically, one of the things that the moderator asked us was advice for couples who are thinking about getting married. Yeah. And so because we're big on communication mm-hmm. and we think that communication is the ultimate it's love language. It's, yes. It's all it's, it's ultimate, ultimate love in a language. successful relationship. Right. It yeah. is. It yeah. Is. I agree. Um it's huge. And if you learn how to do it early when the trials and tribulations of life come up, mm-hmm. it's a little easier to do. Yeah. Um and, and we're uh, and we're also always wanting to to share with couples that you know, what you see on TV, what you see on social media, what you see on the internet is not the real thing. Expect trials, expect pain, expect discomfort, expect challenges, but expect joy, Mm -hmm. expect connection and expect opportunities to grow together as you grow in your relationship with one another. And that's the whole purpose of us having this conversation is because it will it will, you know, they, things will come up. Some of the, the five things we mentioned mm-hmm. will come up, but having a conversation about them in the beginning makes that a little more palatable as you begin to get into yeah. um, the, the depthness of the relationship. And we're not saying that these are the only five things. No, we're just, just saying five. that these are five, five things. And yeah. we could do another show with five more things. Um, but because of some of the soulful conversations that we've had with other couples and the situations that we've been um, made aware of as a result of our coaching practice, we felt like these were the five things that keep coming up. Yeah. So I just, I say this and not in a, in a jokey way, but these are like real world issues, family. That's why we bring them to you. So, okay. All right. That's it. We had five things couples talk about before, um, marriage or engaging in a long-term relationship, uh-huh. committing in a long-term relationship. We hope this has been helpful to you. Yes. We invite you to share it with friends and family. And uh, we appreciate each and every one of you for listening on your favorite podcast app or watching on YouTube. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you in the next conversation. Can I say one more thing? Sure. We said that this was for couples before they get married. But well, for those of you who have been married for a long time, oh, yeah. these are good maintenance conversations. Yeah, yeah. So if you've been married five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, these might these are topics that you should revisit. Yes. So while they are absolutely critical for the beginning, yes. they also are very helpful during. Um, so if you're you know, trying to get away, you know, you say to your spouse, hey, let's go away. These are five things that, you know, y'all can talk about while you're away so that you come back home with fresh perspective and fresh connection around these five topics. Good stuff. Good awesome. stuff. All right. All right, family. That's it. Again, I am I'm Frank and I am Sheila Battle. That's me, Sheila, y'all. I am. Hey. Thank you all for <laughs> uh, tuning in and listening to Soulful Conversation. As I said, we look forward to speaking with you in the next conversation. Take care, family, and be well. Stay soulful. Bye-bye.